Alright, this old gatekeeper here. We've got Mr. Feel Good's uh, Fat Boy 2x8. This is a 2 driving 8 staged amplifier. And basically, the way they got it labeled right here in the front is low means low drive. I, I don't really like the way that's labeled, honestly. I'd rather just put two pill right here, eight pill right here. But basically, that means that's low drive, meaning it's the two going into the eight. Okay. that would be high drive but basically two pill on two pill off eight pill on eight pill off both of them on okay so anyway so basically uh, you, you blew a transistor which is this bad boy right here actually the um, the emitter come undone which you do see that happening a lot with these it's basically loose right there surprise it ain't it already fell out so basically here's what we did <clears throat> which I'm kinda glad we did do this <laughs> alright we had two uh, HG2879's right here in the driver section okay so what we went ahead and did is removed these okay and moved one of them over to here where you had to blow blue blown one at okay so what that did is that allowed this whole section to be still matched okay other than if we wouldn't have done that you pretty much I mean you could have put a new transistor in here but it would have been a very good chance of having an imbalance I hate it. I really do hate it when it comes to uh, HGs and uh, Chinese type transistors, but usually it's good to go ahead and replace at least the four pill section, if not all of them. But uh, luckily we're able to do that. Okay, so here is the remaining good HG. Okay, pretty low HFE value. We can trade that in if you want to towards the cost, or I can send that back to you. So what we went ahead and did is installed two Toshiba 2290s. As you can see there, two used but very, very good quality. They had about a 38 and a 41 HFE, so they were matched. And um, with doing that, Another thing I went ahead and did is the back end of this transformer was very close to touching the board. So I went ahead and put a little standoff back down there so keep that from happening. And to be honest with you, whenever I install any of my transformers, my inch and a half, or pretty much any of them, I go ahead and put standoffs on them already. Just you never know what's happening. Once heat gets to these amplifiers, you know they'll start kind of shifting a little bit. The transformers will start kind of dropping a little bit, etc. I'd like just like to, because I mean, I have seen it happen. I've, I've, now, I've only had one amplifier where it has happened, but I mean, it can happen where the back of this transformer touches this board right here in shorts. And then you got a serious problem on your hands, blowing all transistors pretty much. So anyway, so since we went down to 2290s, that made me have to go ahead and change this whole driver circuit, the wraps and everything, which I am glad that I did. And the reason why the wire that was used with the driver section now not, not I checked all the other part of the amplifier and this wire was not used anywhere else but the driver section but this is not Teflon wire what it is it's a Tefzel wire it's still a high temp wire but it's not Teflon okay so I as you can see took my iron there I don't know if it'll focus or not I took my iron there and melted the wire 
once I unwrapped one, I pretty much could tell right away that it was not Teflon. Now, of course, this could be argued. I have seen certain people use this wire on input transformers, basically saying, you know, this is abrasive free wire. You know, it's not going to cut real easy. You know, it, it, it is an, 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 a, a middle spec type wire. Input transformers aren't going to get as hot. I do understand that. It is cheaper to use this. I do understand that as well. Me, myself, I do have some of this wire, but I like to use it where there is not going to be heat involved. Okay, so it's best to go ahead and just wrap the transformer with Teflon wire. I mean, <laughs> it really is. I understand wanting to save a little bit on the cost, etc. But anyway, so I'm glad I figured that out now there ain't none of that wire anywhere else in the amp like I said but so we went ahead and rewrapped the transformers with Teflon wire and after doing that I also had to go ahead and retune the output and the input of the two pill section after I got done with it um, well before I retuned everything it was only doing about a hundred watts so after I got done with it you know it sure enough came up about twice that all right let's see here uh that's pretty much about all that i had to do i checked the input and output to the amp and everything is fine i'm not going to say that i 100 percent agree with using 120s right here but the amp seems to be weren't running okay that way so we'll just leave it be um you know this is not my build you know this is a fat boy build and you know everybody has their own way of doing things which is fine and i had to go ahead and replace uh, these two uh, resistors were blown and of course the 10 ohm down here was blown and uh, i went ahead and replaced these two with two watt resistors that's what we normally use anyway because you want these to blow when there's an imbalance okay i didn't have any more of these three watt resistors on hand so what i did is i took the one off here put it right here and then just put two new uh, two watt 100 ohms there okay so all right well let's uh, take a look at this oh I'm just gonna show you what the drivers doing first because then I'll have to hook the power supply up for the 8 pill a section well you know what I don't want to stop this yet so I'm gonna put this down so I can change my slug real quick After I drop some stuff. <laughs> Where is it? Where is my kilowatt slug? I guess it's right here. There it is. Alright. Sorry about that. All right, now another thing I went ahead and did is I checked the input, uh, the, the, excuse me, the pass-through tune, and I'm telling you, they got very fortunate not needing any pass-through tuning on this using two relays. Very fortunate, but the pass-through looks great. do Through looks absolutely great. We're hitting right there about one watt dead key. Oh, oh. It's only showing about three watts RMS, but we got a little bit of loss going through the relays and everything, of course. But uh, and uh, this is a new radio. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Snake Doctor, the Rattlesnake. I keep saying Snake Doctor. Mr. Rattlesnake uh, hooked me up with a gift of a brand new Cobra 29. My old old one croaked on me. So, uh, 
major blessing, man, from uh, Mr. Rattlesnake, a uh, local out here. Real nice to hook me up with that uh, gift, brand new 29, did the little regulated dead key variable to it and turned the modulation up. And that's all I like. I want like my radios to be stock. No hacking done to them on my tuning radio. So I'm on my bench radio. It does right there about four watts RMS. We're only showing about three right now. A little bit of loss through the cables and all that good stuff. This radio may not be as strong as my other one, but as long as I'm right there three and four watts, that's all I all I'm really wanting, you know. So all right. Go ahead and turn the amp on. Looking at the thousand watt slug. So we're looking at the bottom scale. Do yeah. Do yeah. So it's getting close to about 200 watts. You know, another thing you got to keep in mind there is a little bit of loss through all the cables and everything. Here, you know what? Let me put in a smaller slug, be a little bit more accurate. I forgot about my 250 watt slug here. There we go. I have a little bit more of an accurate reading. So I got 250 watt slug in, so we're looking at the top scale. Oh, a little bit closer to 200, but accurate between both of them. And of course, uh, once you Pick a little bit stronger of a radio, you'll be getting about 250 or so. No. So let's see what a one watt day key gives us. That's real low of a day key. <laughs> Probably about a 10, 20 watt day key. And if you turn the variable all the way down, no. Looks like you're getting about 75 watts. If we turn the variable about halfway up, go a little bit over 100 watts. Okay. Input reflect with the two pill section. Go, go, great. Had about a one watt worth the input uh, reflect before I retuned everything. I already knew I was going to have to do it, but I did replace with these to uh, Toshiba 2290s with the circuit that was already there just to see what it would do for the fun of it. But the wraps change with a 2879. You're working with a 3 and 2 on the wraps. Now it's a 4 and 3 on the wraps. I kept the 120s down here. You can use 330s if you want to with 2290s. The output tune changed a little bit. Uh, 120 on the output and on the input we are rolling with a 91 pico farad and uh, usually it'll be a 90 to 120 on the input so anyway there you go we turn that off and turn the 8 pill on of course I'm only on my uh, servo supply here but I'll just show you what it's doing with the radio hitting it no oh, of course that's going to be over 250 watts let me take that out. Put that thousand back in here. I'm sorry. I'm. I just try to get, want to get these videos done with as, as many less clips as possible. Because the more, it, it takes longer to get them all put together at the end there. But anyway, we got the thousand watt slug in. Just looking at the eight pill. Just you know, throwing about 20 watts through it. PEP. 1000 watt slug again. We are looking at the PEP here, bottom side, bottom part of the scale. Go oh, yeah. about 400, 450, 500 watts. It's showing right there about 500 watts. Uh, it's pegging the 500 watts scale slug. I'm sorry, man. I just got up, y'all. My words, I'm slipping words, etc. RF's getting to my brain. But anyway, uh, the, yeah, the 500 watt slug was pegging, and that's normally what I'm gonna be seeing with a five pill on my bench radio. Uh, eight, got the money. I'll, bear with me. An eight pill with my bench radio will usually be doing right there about five, six hundred watts usually. So it's right there in the specs. And like I said, I did check the input and output uh, on the LC circuits here. 
tuning circuit and all that look great so I'll leave that as is alright now I do not have a 200 150 amp unregulated power supply here I do have a 200 amp unregulated supply meaning we're just going to be doing some quick keys so these are HG's they are sensitive to voltage we're just going to be doing some quick keys so I can uh, we can be, get this thing uh, get this video done and get it out to you thanks for hanging in there with me Mr. Feel Good I know you uh, had to wait a little bit longer on this and you're pretty much going to hear that with about every video here till I get done because uh, I definitely took in more work than I really should have I've learned my lesson I'm sure a lot of y'all are probably getting tired of hearing me say that every video but anyway I am going to have to press stop now because I'm going to hook up the power supply and all that stuff and I don't want you to just be sitting here looking at nothing Maybe I can get something uh, interesting where I can just uh, sit the camera somewhere and you know you can be watching something while I'm getting ready. No, nah, we, we won't do all that. I'll be back. Oh, slurring gatekeeper. Mine not working right. Be back. All right, before I hooked it up on the uh, 200 amp unregulated supply, I went ahead and hooked it up on the 100 amp unregulated supply. And it is sucking it down uh, pretty dang well to about 13 volts But uh, just to show you what it's doing real quick just on that about 13 volts thousand watt slug go over a thousand RMS go Almost about 500 bird like I said 13.3 volts or so. Oh, yeah like I said, this is unregulated. Of course, when I key, the voltage just drops. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. And yes, I'm going to get me a uh, regulated power supply built at some point. I've just been so busy, I ain't been able to take some time and get it done. But, but anyway, just want to show you that the amp's working like it's supposed to. You know, I at least need to show you on the meters that it's working like it's supposed to before it leaves here. So give me one second, I'm going to hook up the uh, 200 amp unreg supply and just give it a quick burp so you can see that uh, this bad boy is working well. Alright, we'll be right back. Alrighty. Like I said, we're just going to do a quick key, quick burp. Got a 2500 watt slug, this is your peak. Looking at the top scale. Dun. Right there, about 1500 watts. Dun. Right there, almost about 800 bird. Dun. That's dropping about 15.1 volts. A little bit under 800 bird. And one thing you will notice when you're dealing with staged amplifiers like this, you, you do get a little bit less out just from the loss of having to travel up and down all these mini coaxes and uh, like for example right now if I hooked up an external driver and turn this two pill section off and turn the eight pill section on you'd probably I've noticed you normally you'll get maybe about a hundred more birds so it probably would have been doing about 900 bird there and uh, but that's not a noticeable difference on the other end so we're getting about 1500 peak a little bit under 800 bird so she's ready to rock and roll man if i wanted to i could hook up my uh my derail radio up there and make this thing probably do 1200 plus bird but i'm not going to do it these are hgs i'm on the unregulated supply as you can see it's floating at 19 volts and uh this ain't my amp so i ain't gonna be sitting here risking everything just to show you a little bit more output all right, man. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm going to get the top back on and get it soldered back up to the diodes here. And uh, when you do these stage damps, man, you got to do a little extra when you want a remote so you can turn each section on and off. But anyway, all right, Mr. Feel Good. Thanks for hanging in there with me, man. I got this uh, back up and uh, rolling for you. And I hope it lasts a long time. And hopefully you won't have to send it back to get it repaired. No more. Happy DX. Have fun out there dropping the hammer. Old GK out here around the northeast end of Georgia. I'm good and gone. Bye-bye. On to the next project.